this ought to be good. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. This box might have been my first dip into Retro 40K. I remember sniping this on eBay after a great deal three or four years ago. Although it promised some paints and brushes, those were unfortunately lost to time. What was in the box is a small collection of unclipped Space Marines and Gene Stealers from 2003. This should make for a very interesting painting project, and stay tuned all the way till the end of this video to see a montage of painted models courtesy of the EOB Complete community. This box was published in 2003, and oh boy was it ever. Ah, some of this old stuff is absolutely classic. The thing that really blew me away was these Gene Stealers on Sprue. I think this is an absolute work of art. I collect Gene Stealer cults, but I don't know if I'll ever have the heart to actually remove these from the Sprue. They are so gorgeous. It's very different than the current Games Workshop style of Sprue. If you mean the body, base, arm, arm, and it's arranged in a very pleasing way, a human being definitely came up with this. Like if you look at a modern 40K Sprue, it's perfect, technically. Every single thing is designed in the exact perfect way so that you can have the maximum number of bits and bobs. There's nowhere where you could even fit a finger through. It's just like a mesh. I'm sure a computer algorithm comes up with this to make it perfect, but there is a beauty to the old school hand design. And I think, I don't think I can take these gene sealers off the sprue. I think I might have to leave them just like this. But really, the reason I got this box who doesn't need more Space Marines? Five classic three-piece Space Marines from the glory days of 40K when everything was great and there was not a complaint to be found in sight, right? But these guys are super fun. I actually have, uh, when I first got them, I cleaned them up and then put them in the box. And there they sat for years and years. But I think it is time. I think it's time to throw a little bit of paint on them. I collect Black Templar Space Marines and I think I would love to have a squad of five classic tactical marines in my army. And these five were not the only amazing find in this box. There was instructions. This box was printed as a teaser for Warhammer 40k 3rd edition and it shows. This booklet is hilarious, including such wonderful quotes as, Space Marine Assault is just a taster for the massively popular and rewarding hobby Warhammer 40,000 massively popular. Remember, this was 2003. Another awesome moment was, as in Chess or Checkers, in Space Marine Assault, each side gets a turn. Yep, 40k, just like Chess and Checkers. And an adorable little quote in the painting section, it is a widely held belief that painted models perform better on the field of battle. This little booklet has everything, and in the lore section, it has a wonderful little quote that has an attribution that I have not seen before. They shall be my finest warriors, these men who give themselves to me. Like clay I shall mold them, and in the furnaces of war I shall forge them. They will be of iron will and steel muscle. In great armor shall I clad them, and in the mightiest guns they will be armed. They are my bulwark against the terror, they are the defenders of humanity, they are my space marines, and they shall know no fear. Attributed to the Emperor. And I've seen this quote in many places, but I've never seen it attributed to the Emperor. And that means he definitely never said that. That's hilarious. If I had to pick a favorite thing about this little booklet though, I would have to say it is the nerds. Ah, look at these fine gentlemen. You'll never see a more wretched hive of scum and villainy than the players that are represented here in this little pamphlet. And there's even some pictures of a game in progress and it looks like this may be the kitchen at Nottingham. It is absolutely adorable. 40k over the years has progressed very far from this, but I still think it is really fun to look back at what things used to be like. This used to be the baddest of the bad, the ultimate space marine. And so I think I want to paint them up in all of their glory, but I still want them playable in my army. In my wargaming career, I started off with the 5th edition Space Marine box, and then the updated 6th edition Space Marines. These lend themselves to lots of fun conversion and posing, and when the Horus Heresy kits came out, I bought a box of Mark III Marines and shuffled those parts into the mix. I love how my classic Marines look, and then we have these guys. There is certainly a charm to them. As round, unrealistic, and derpy as they are, they are what Space Marines were for years. 
I want my Space Marine army to be a time capsule of 40k, and I want to paint these guys to work as models that could exist alongside their more modern counterparts. It's time to paint these suckers. But you know what, now that I look at them, you know what I've forgotten? They don't have bases yet. Or they do, but they have these silly little slot bases. I think we can do a little better. My goal for these is to make them look not necessarily indistinguishable because that would be a miracle, but I want them to look not out of place next to a modern tactical marine. So I'm gonna need to give them some extra special bases. As you can see, there is a slight size difference between these and the current tactical kits. So I will need to put these models on a pedestal of cork. I figured out the size, broke them out and super glued them down to the base. And I saved all the cork. Perhaps I'll use it for some terrain in the future. Now, even with the extra height, they're still too short. So I made up the difference with some super glue and cat litter. Cat litter works great when you want to work fast. You will go through a lot of glue, but it'll be dry almost instantly. I pop the sanding drum onto my Dremel and ground the cat litter flat to accept the feet of my Marines. Now Space Marines have nice big flat feet, so they glue down well to the bases. No pinning needed here. The bases have finished being built and now it's time to give them my patented blend of fine grain sand, medium grit sand, and small pebbles. All of this stuff was sifted by me from a bag of construction sand I bought many years ago, but it has served me well. And I also like to use wood glue to bond my sand to bases because I find that the resins are a little bit stronger and it doesn't shrink as much while it dries and it makes the sand much tougher. I always apply my sand in descending size with the biggest grit first and ending with the finest. That way everything has some fresh glue to stick to. With my bases Dunyan rings, they are now at the same head height as my modern tactical marines. I think they look great. It's a bit silly to have them on those monstrous bases, but I think they look all right. Then it was time for priming. So here comes the tricky thing with painting black armor. It's kind of done already. I mean, the armor is black, and if there's if I do anything to it, it no longer becomes black armor. If I if I edge highlight with a little bit of blue, it'll become dark blue armor. If I edge highlight with a little bit of brown, it'll become a red or dark brown armor. And so it becomes really, really difficult to paint. But for my Space Marines, what I find works very, very well is to dust on a little bit of gray paint and to dry brush a little bit of gray paint. Even though it does make my marines slightly more gray than they are black, I think it looks a little bit better on the table. It helps bring out a lot of their details and a lot of the nice particular decorations on them. And even though it does make my black Templar a little bit more of a gray Templar, I can live with it. I think it makes for a better mini. First things first, the shoulders. I broke out my Vallejo Bone White and my Superfine Airbrush and immediately found a problem. Well. I've almost got these guys' shoulders base coated with Vallejo Bone White, and I forgot because it's been a hot second since I've painted my Space Marines. Vallejo Bone White is an absolutely miserable color to paint with. Holy moly, I tried to put it through my airbrush three times. It clogged on the first spray three times. I put some on my palette, and it's just a pile of crumbs. This paint, it is a beautiful color when you can get it applied, but holy moly, does it suck. Please leave a comment if you know of a wonderful cream paint that goes on nice and smooth, has some okay coverage, and can go through an airbrush. Because Vallejo Bone White, I have gone through a few bottles of this because this is the color I like. It sucks. It really does. I probably put on 20 coats onto each shoulder pad and I probably still have 10 to go. So Vallejo Bone White. I finished up getting the shoulder pads done and then I darkened the edges with some Vallejo Earth, which is an actually good paint and went through the airbrush flawlessly. After that, I took out some Games Workshop Agrax Earthshade and my longest bristle brush and I painted on a line in the corners of each shoulder so that the nice creamy colored shoulder pad is nicely framed with a line of brown. To protect my shoulders, I sprayed them with a few blasts of gloss paint. I have finished the shoulder pads. Now it was a little bit of a hassle. Usually if I was working on the modern Tactical Marines, I would have just painted the shoulders separately. But because all the models are molded in basically one piece, I'm gonna paint all the shoulder pads, finish them, including applying one of my favorite things, decals, and then I'm going to cover them up and then finish painting the rest of the model. But all in all, these guys should be pretty easy to paint up. 
Decals are awesome and tricky. For my Templar cross, I carefully outline the shape with my hobby knife to remove the extra plastic film I don't need. Then I cut out all 10. Since I have years of practice with this decal, I rarely screw up. So I only need these 10. But back in the day, it would take 11, 12, 13 decals to get 10 good ones. I set that on the wet palette to soak. This is Microsole and Microset decal solutions. The red will slightly melt the decal and I brush this onto the soaking decal. Then I brush the blue part on the shoulder. I took the decal off the water as soon as it separated from the paper and I pulled it onto the shoulder. I poked at it until it was right where I wanted it. Then I took a damp paper towel and really crushed the water out from underneath. Applying all those decals really brought me back to assembling my first couple of boxes of Tactical Marines. Ah, I love a decal. Thank goodness for Micro Soul and Micro Set. Also, I'm pretty sure Micro Set, which is the decal setting solution, uh, I'm pretty sure it's just vinegar, because it smells like vinegar. I've used vinegar before for decals, but uh, yeah, good stuff. One more coat, a gloss varnish, and these shoulder pads should be very well protected, but they're looking a little too perfect. I think to make these look proper grim, dark, and modern, they need a little bit of weathering. Another blast of gloss varnish to seal in the flavor, and then I mixed up some bone white and earth to make a color I will stipple on. I grabbed a piece of sponge and my tweezers. I ever so gently sponged on a little bit of tan to make it look like the paint has chipped a little bit. I don't know if I like it, but it was worth a try. Now with my shoulders finished, it was time to protect them so I could move on to the body. I took some poster tack and I squished it over the shoulders. With the poster tack on, these look a little bit more like the chewing gum shoulder marines than the black templar, but they are just about ready for another blast of black paint. To highlight my black armor, I mix myself up a dark gray and put it through my airbrush. It can help to mix up airbrush colors, especially large amounts, in a different cup and then pour it into the airbrush. I sprayed this on from above to give me some nice subtle highlights. But not wanting to be too subtle, I blasted the model with a dry brushing of gray to do a quick and dirty edge highlight. Well, remember when I said that I didn't mind my black Templar being a little bit gray? I think this is a little bit too gray, but I can fix this. with one of my favorite tools, Badger Minotaur Ghost Tints. I'm gonna be using a little bit of Midnight Blue, which is black. These tint paints do exactly what they say on the tin. They will slightly change the color, in this case, darkening the whole model a little bit. My Marines needed some correction, but you know what's always right the first time? That's right, our Patreon. The best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there, you'll gain access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live on YouTube, a hobby hangout live stream every week, and more. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get back to the painting. Then I began painting with a brush. Somehow, up until now, it's been special effect after special effect. Now it's time to do some real brush work. My Black Templar color scheme is a tiny, tiny bit lore inaccurate. Uh, normally, Black Templar all have black shoulder trim, except for uh, combat troops. But I think the, black or the red trim looks really, really good. So I put the red trim on all of my Marines. And instead of having a crisp white, I do cream for all of the shoulder pauldrons because I also think that looks a little bit more interesting. And my lore is this particular crusade has been fighting for so long that the color has begun to fade. And so that's why my Templar look a little bit different from the average black Templar out there. But I think that's just fine because it's my army and I get to do what I want. And I did have, for a long time, I did have the correct colors and I thought it looked a little bit plain when they're all masked up and it's just a big giant mass of black and white and gray. And so uh, I went in and I changed all of the shoulders and actually I painted all of the weapons red because before all the weapons were black because that's how the Black Templar paint them. But uh, Really, things that really help Marines stand out is painting, number one, painting the heads a different color, always a good idea, and painting the guns a different color is always a good idea. It really helps them stand out and look more interesting. Since these are rank and file, I have no problem using washes. No point highlighting those Aquilas if 90% is going to be covered up by the bolt guns. And speaking of those bolt guns, I mixed myself up some dark red, red, and light red on my palette. On my bolt guns, I base coated with dark red, and then I painted on a gradient. It's an easy thing to do, and it really makes them pop. The bottom of the bolt gun stays dark red, but then the tops become red, and then I take it even further with an edge highlight of bright red. It's so much more interesting than just plain metal. On the knees, I do a bit of freehanding. I make it a four square checker, with Vallejo bone white and red. It's a bit of work, but it's much easier than freehanding the Templar symbol on the knee. 
which I did exactly twice, then gave up. And unique to my crusade, I painted on a little shield on the leg of most of my marines. I started out painting it white. Here is where I get the shape just right. Then I painted tan, and then I paint a red stripe going diagonally across the shield. This shows that all my Templar are from the same crusade. I really do like the look of the Primaris Marines a lot more than the classic Marines. Although I loved them at the time, uh, now that I've seen the perfection that is the Primaris, uh, it's hard to go back. But what I do miss about the Primaris is uh, the ability to take a heavy and a special weapon in a squad. It kind of made for a, a very unique feel. Uh, some weapons didn't really matter that much, like taking a heavy bolter in a squad of tactical Marines. That wouldn't really change a battle much. But I remember there was one game where I took uh, four squads of Space Marines with four LAS cannons. And all of a sudden I had LAS cannons all over the board. And that was a very, very different playstyle. I can't imagine that uh, that won't happen for the Primaris one day, that they're going to be able to take some heavy weapons. But it is interesting. They're, they're about three years old and they still cannot take any unique war gear in their squads. To paint Space Marine eyes, I used to do the classic red lens with a shadow in the front and a highlight dot of white in the back. But then I thought about it, and this was tons of work for something that you can barely see on the table. So now I just do red with a line of white. And you know, even though it's more simple, I think it looks better. It's easier to read as a glowing eye. Now for the best part, removing the masking. Look at that! In just one second, the model goes from good to great. I painted the shoulder trim red, and the model was rapidly nearing completion. I highlighted the tops of the red trim with some bright red to add a little dimension. This is where the light would be hitting the shoulder pad directly. Now for the best part of any project, gluing on all the sub assemblies. Now usually I'm too impatient and I glue these on way too early and it ends up marring the paint job because the super glue spills or things aren't quite done being painted yet. But this time I have waited and now it is time to finally glue everything together and see what it looks like. All complete. Working in sub-assemblies is basically required for Space Marines because so much of them overlap, and it would make it unnecessarily difficult to paint around parts. For the bases, I keep it simple. Water down earth, and I slop it on, and then when it's dry, I give it a coat with the airbrush. This brightens up the color a lot, and I let it spill onto the feet so it looks like they've been walking around this ground for a long time. It makes the model look grounded. Then a dry brushing of Vallejo Bone White. I guess it is good for something after all. This brings out all the sand and rocks, and I let the dry brushing hit the feet and legs also. Yay! Ah, they're all painted, and they're all finished. The only thing left to do is say it with me now. Paint the rim of the base black. And here they are, in all their classic tactical marine glory. And, hey, wait a second, that's not the right models. Ah, there we go. Their detail might be soft and their poses might not be dynamic, but they got it where it counts. These might not be the oldest Space Marines, 2003, so 18 years old, but painted up to look like modern Marines, I think they're pretty much indistinguishable in a crowd. Take a look at all my tactical Marines. Try and see if you can spot all five retro models. I have 58 tactical Marines, 40 of them are classic Bolter Boys, and the last 18 are all Devastators. Although not actually Devastators. I'm a Black Templar player, and so we don't take Devastator squads in our Space Marine army, we mix them into our Crusade squads. So those aren't actually heavy weapons, they're just long-range close combat weapons. I think my third edition Marines fit nicely right in there, and on this table in front of me are many, many different boxes of 40k Space Marines. I have the third edition ones, I also have some 5th edition Marines, some 6th edition Marines, and the old 5th edition Devastator box, and the newer Devastator box all mixed in together to form a wonderful selection of tactical marines. If you were ever wondering how I paint my Black Templar, this is exactly how I do it. Most of the work goes into getting the shoulder pads just right, the actual model paints up pretty fast. I hope you all enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments below, do you hold on to your old minis, or do you let them age gracefully and end up on the shelf? Also let me know, is this just a space marine thing, wanting to hold on to all the old sculpts? Are there a whole bunch of Eldar players who love the old Metal Howling Banshees, even though the new classic ones are better in every single way? I don't know. But now it's time for the real star of the show, this week's EOB Complete Submissions. 
We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. A Vampire by Comiconomics, A Space Marine Captain in Terminator Armor by Guy Man Hype, A Space Marine Captain in Terminator Armor by The Curious Courage Fight Kiwi, A Classic Space Orc by Just Make Stuff, A Catacomb Command Barge by Canary, Some Space Marines by Coek15324, Some Blade Guard Veterans by Aldus, A Tau Drone by Frog, An Ogre Maw Tyrant by Fenris North, an Adventurer by Kiro the Avenger, A Sister of Battle by Power, A Primaris Chaplain by Disco, A Primaris Space Marine by Defcon Zero, Some Clone Troopers by Wolfpack, A Skitari by I Sip Potassium Hydroxide, Some Assassins by Duplicorn, A Tech Priest Engine Seer by Mistkeeper, A Minotaur by Shebwees, A Zangor Shaman by KD984, Some Space Marine Immortals by Joe Dracos, a Cowboy by Toon, A Grandmaster by Deathwing12, Acadian by Ed Scar, Some Primaris Assault Intercessors by I Am Bob, and An Imperial Knight by CEO of Eating Sons. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.